Hi everyone, this is Coach D. Today we're talking plays again. I'm gonna open up my playbook. I'm literally gonna walk you through my plays right now. What I usually get is the question about how many plays should I have in my playbook? Should I have 36? Should I have just eight? Should I have four solid plays that I love to run different times, different ways, etc.? That question comes up every single time in my one-on-one. -on -one. If you haven't done a one-on-one -on -one with me, Make sure you connect with me. I'd love to go over your playbook, positions, rotations, defense, game plan, anything like that. Uh, you can go to the site. It says work with Coach D. I'd love to hang out for 30 or 60 minutes. But let's dive right in. I'm gonna give you some pretty good secrets today. The answer I usually give is, you know I love wristbands. In my wristbands, I always have, no matter what age I'm coaching, I will have eight here, then I'll have eight here and eight here. So 24 plays that I can mix and match if it's situational, if I'm trying to goal line versus trying to get the first down, maybe I'm on first down, I wanna run something a little you know, more aggressive, et cetera. It allows me to have a full range of 24 plays to choose from. If I notice that a defender on that side is just crushing us, then now I can move over to that side because I'm gonna attack. I, I see him, he's brand new. I, I'm going after you know, the, the linebacker or maybe the, the safety on that side. That allows me to then choose which plays I wanna pick. If I only had eight plays, it wouldn't give me as much flexibility. But saying that, here is the answer. For me, it's all about formations. I want you to at least pick two, if not three, sometimes four, depending on, formations. And then you can build plays off of that. I went ahead and printed out my four per page uh, from my play builder. And again, if you don't have the play builder, you can mix and match and customize and move things around. And then you can print it out like this or one per page or wristbands like this. But this right here is all one formation four different plays in one formation. This is actually a RPO, so run pass option. So you can see right here, the quarterback is handing to B, and then B can look to this receiver first and see that fly pattern. On the next play, it's the exact same thing happening here. And again, on an RPO, B can run if they want to. So if B wants to, they could just take off and run. Doesn't matter what the rules, there's usually like the, the quarterback can't do a quarterback sneak, but once they hand it off to B, now that running back can either throw or they can run. So that's a different video, but check this out. Looks the exact same, but now I have a crossing pattern where boom, I'm hitting the opposite side of the field. Well, check this out. Now I'm doing the exact same thing here, number three, right? And now I'm just going to the other side. So same exact play, now I'm just choosing to go that side. So I put that in my, my playbook to make it easy. And then guess what happens here? Now from the same formation, instead of handing off, right? We see it all the time in the NFL. Instead of handing off, they just quickly fake to that. And now B acts like they have it. Now I have a couple seconds that boom, I can hit this corner route. Well, check this out. The next page of four, look at same exact formation. I switch up a little bit because I have A here instead of B, but it's basically the same, but now I'm faking. So now instead of B running straight ahead, B now crosses this way. So from the exact same formation, A there, C there, B here, I can either hand off, that's like play one through three, and it could be an RPO, they can run or pass, or I can fake and they can go that way, they can go that way, but the defense now is thrown off. So from one formation that we've mastered, all we've done is mastered this. And all the, the uh, wide receivers have to do is be able to do basic routes. Look at these, these are just fly patterns. That's an out and up pattern. That's a corner route. So these are just our basic routes but now what we're doing is we're putting it into a formation that we've got down. 
So during your first practice, if you really wanted to, if you have more of an experienced team, you could just teach these eight plays. Once they see their letter, once they see their color, it's pretty easy for them to pick up. Okay, so all I have to do is a post. All right, that's pretty easy. And then like I always tell you, just put the cones out on the field for the first couple times so they can see the spacing. And then they look down at their wristbands or they look at this and they're like, okay, so I'm just gonna do five steps and then do a post. That's pretty easy. So for me, it's more about formations. Let's go. I told you I was gonna go all the way in. This is, this is deep. My next four plays are one formation. This is trips. But what I do is I bring, I, I bring two wide receivers and then I have kind of like a, they're, they're dropped back a little bit. So you see them kind of stacked. So I have one receiver, another receiver, and then one back here. So it really throws them off. And then, again, you can see it. I go up top. I'm going one side. I'm going to that side. I can feel it, right? And this is short. This is shorter than this. So if I see that there's some space in there's like, they're on the line, then I can just hit this and get over the middle, over the top of them right here. If nobody's up top, up front, here's the where the ball is hiked, I can just do a quick boom, right? They call that a whip, right across and boom. Same thing over here, a little bit deeper, but now you're going on the other side. But look, it's the same formation. So now I have four more plays that I can use different situations, right? And now I do twins and I switch it up different spots. Twins just means you have two on one side. If you're doing six V six, seven V seven, all of my playbooks are very simple, very similar to this where they have, you know, sometimes it'll, and it, it, it actually comes with formations in the play builder where you can see without any of these routes, you can actually see what does it look like just to have twins with 6v6 or 7v7. But it's the same principle. You do one simple right formation and then boom, they can do, this is literally the same exact play. Right? The only difference is boom, B is going underneath here, right? So that's why I like to not restrict myself to only eight. And at the same time, I don't need 36 of these, right? If I'm trying to ah, leaf through this and I don't have my wristbands, right? My wristbands are so powerful because I can literally go like this throughout my whole playbook. See, okay, all right, 13, 13. All right, you know what? Let's just do that whole entire row. And when I say an entire row, 13, 14, 15, 16, that's almost like doing what you just saw these back to back and they're like, okay, who's going to get the ball? They're just doing different things. I'm getting a fake here and a, and the ball's going to go this way and that way, right? I could do all four of these in order. It looks the exact same, but all of a sudden the defense is like, well, where, which way are they going to go? Right? So it's all about formations. It's all about progressions more than it is. How many plays should I have down? I keep with the, right, with the twins up here. So I have six of the twins, right? Six of the twins formation, and it really just depends. Do I wanna go over the top, hit that corner route? Sure, right? If I'm a couple yards off the, the end zone, might as well just hit that end zone. Or if I see this is light coverage right here, and I, I'm i like two yards, it's goal line, boom, I could just, boom. And then of course, you know I love my tight formation. If you haven't watched any of my other videos, you know I'm all about tight formation. So I do several tight formation. Uh, and then I just go back to uh, trips here. So I now, because I've been doing this for a minute, in this playbook, I actually have five formations. And I could only use three if I wanted to. If I really wanted to, I could just have three. And then if there's like a special play that you love that doesn't fit anything, it's kind of like the, 
and it works every single time, that's okay. All right, I don't mind you having a couple of those. I have that one just thrown in because uh, almost automatic, I call it out of nowhere, and it usually hits the sideline and scores. Couple principles here. If you're not using wristbands, it does make it a little bit easier when you have 24 plays. If you are doing four per page or even one per page, at least getting down two to three formations is critical. That's more important than the number of plays. And then you could build four, five, eight plays off of that one formation as you saw I did here. Because all you're doing is you think I'm going to give the ball away. I'm not. This time I'm faking. Oh, the next time, boom, they take it. Oh, the next time it's an RPO where B can actually throw it. Wait, B's throwing it? What is happening? That's all you want. And all you need is seconds. You just need seconds for the defender to be like, which way? What? What? What's happening? So don't overthink it. Last thing I would say is have an assistant or have a parent who is somewhat organized who can, while you're going through your plays, and let's say you do have 24 plays, what I always do is I have my sister-in-law, her daughter, my niece, always coaches with me, has been playing the, on, on my teams until she aged out, but uh, her mom, my sister-in-law, would sit there on the sideline and identify, circle, the plays that were crushing it, the plays that we dominated. Right, so then I know, okay, let me tell you, one, two, three, seven, eight are just dominant. We get it every single time. So having someone, yes, I've got 24. Yes, I have my wristbands or maybe I'm using this. Yes, I have a couple formations, but now you want someone to sit there and all they're doing is identifying what's working within your formations and your playbooks. When you do that, after at least probably one, two weeks, you're gonna have a fine-tuned system where you'll be like, okay, it's this situation. It is fourth down. We've got 10 yards to go. I know exactly which, call, which, which play. Or, hey, I've started to identify this side or that side of the defense is a little bit weaker. We're going after this side, right? You'll start being able to make it easier to make those decisions. Now, one last thing I'll say, I did create situational plays. I call them the play bundles. There's 10 of them. And this is like against the blitz, my best running plays, my best you know, pass plays. So I do have that available. So if you go to flagfootballwithcoachd.com and you go to playbooks and you look at play bundles, those are situational plays. So those are interesting as well. You can get all of those, 100 plays if you want, uh, for a, a nice discount, but that is where I focus. So jump on a one-on-one -on -one with me if you wanna go in depth, but that will give you enough to be dangerous. Look, all of this is available down below and also at flagfootballwithcoachd.com. We're doing it out here. It is nice, it is beautiful. I hope you have a great season out there. Look, this is Coach D. If you like what you see, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.